Jim Beam or armed fire, like you know, like they, like they have in the Turk Street. Mm -hmm. And everybody's saying that nine people got got killed over. By eight, the way. eight people were shot. No one, no one was killed. No one was killed. There have but, been homicides in here. <clears throat> yeah, well, we'll see. And then, then people are getting. Uh, I heard people getting mugged, punched in the face by homeless, and they're saying. This is what happened when we clean up our area. So now we gotta do it on you as it did on us. And that's what they're saying. So, so now now we have to uh, be be worried about us walking down the street now or something like that. I mean, we, 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 we're trying to uh, live a comfortable life and they're, they're making it possible for us to live a comfortable life here. And, and that's that's our call for. I mean, that's, to make, I mean, we want to make it safe for us. But even though we're low income, but we still pay rent here. It's a good residential area. And, you know, citizens of the disabled should be protected. Well, one of the things I think <coughs> um, citizens can do is remember to be always vigilant. Don't walk down the street texting, listening to your MP3s, or um, not paying attention to your surroundings. And always have a buddy with you. Because I have found in the 30 years I've lived here that um, if there's two people walking together, you have less of a chance of getting attacked than if there's a single person by themselves. And the other thing is, which a lot of residents down here tend to do, they walk out of grocery stores with the money in their hand. In the store, put the money in the pocket, usually a front pocket, or somewhere secure. Don't walk out of the store showing that money, because that makes you a target. And for the sergeant, um, I've been, I've helped fight to get the Tin Line Task Force here in 1991. And um, I have found that our officers down here are some of the uh, most highly motivated officers I've ever met in the city. Um, they go out and do far beyond what a lot of officers have done and um, will not rest until they get a problem solved. And I'm very appreciative of that. Um, and I want to thank you very much because our, our officers deserve all the praise we can give them. Because they're really hard workers. Thank you very much. I'll, uh, I'll pass that on to him. Let me just respond to this statement. Uh, I have not heard any information that uh, the citizens are being retaliated against because of increased police activity in Turkey Taylor. But I will bring that, that uh, information to the lieutenants in charge of our investigative unit and Captain Chernus. There are criminals in this area that, uh, that sometimes tend to move to one area. And if they're pushed off that block to another block, we, we try to, to do what we can to address the increased criminal activity that that causes. Yeah. Well, we have another, um, our, our, our black gentleman out here, uh, he wears a, a black hooded sweatshirt. And um, he, he looks at me shifty. I look a lot, you know, when I'm out there, or he comes in here because he misses a, a resident in here. He looked, he looked at me shifty eyed about three or four or five times away in, in this place. Okay. We're walking down we're walking down the hall here. You know, go, go up to the elevator and go up to where we see in here. Okay. But my guess is they're probably both on the same page as far as what's going on in this, in this area. You know, it's well, each, pages, so. each police station has an anonymous <coughs> tip line set up. And I don't know that number by memory, but. It's on the SAT website. If you click on the district stations and particular district station, I think uh, it's on that, there, that link. But uh, if you'd like to pass on this information that way, or yeah. call dispatch and have an officer come meet with you. Yeah. Well, I, I, I also had a kind of reaction with this uh, with black gentleman, too. He, and I says, what he said to me goes, I can't figure you being one of those guys that, that, that say something. I said, well, that's funny. I, I, can't, be, I can't figure you being what you are either. And, 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 then he, uh, and that's when he starts you know, shifting his eyes up. He ain't telling the season now. And um, I, being a resident here, I, I feel like I'm, I'm be, you know, being kind of reacting to the person, the because I, I stood up for myself sick, and, I, and I protect myself just by, just by what I said, you know, because he, uh, he stands in front of a hotel a lot in next door 232 building. We're trying to get a gate that goes down so they can't sleep in front between the doors anymore either. We're trying to get that done. We're trying to get uh, no loitering signs. 
so we can uh, protect the nest in front of the window. And, and two thirty-two. Who's ever in charge? Who's ever the property representative for two thirty-two? Taking contact the police department and facilitate the no trespassing. Are you familiar with that? How that system works? Section 25. We got we got no trespassing as it is, and I don't know what that that ain't doing no good. That's like asking them to oh please calm them down. Please well there are down. Down. But they come back, though. officers do enforce that section of the municipal police code. Yeah. And if 232 is not posted, they can't do that. So at the very least, we should get it posted properly <coughs> so that the officers at least have that option available for enforcement. Yes. Excuse me, Sergeant. Curtis, since you're here and you're on the resident association, so to speak, uh, maybe something you could look into um, for various different buildings down here is get uh, health and safety code 1132, no loitering signs um, posted on the buildings, as well as the section 25 police code for no trespassing. Because that way, since residents like ours can call a dispatch and go, I have a section 25 trespassing when you come and get it. It's posted on the front of our building, but it doesn't work for good without enforcement. And He's talking about the problem the is the, the dust at the TMDC are not being instructed to call the police to enforce no loitering. Um, and it's not really, there is no enforcement of the no loitering policies out here. And, I, and, and part of that is because they're discouraged from calling the police for something as minor as that. Um, because we don't want to have police constantly coming to the front of our building. It's an ongoing issue. We can't call the police every time there's somebody loitering in front of the building. And our desk clerks are not in a position to enforce that themselves either. So I think that we need to come up with some more aggressive policies. And, and, and as an organization, TNDC, well, you like, uh, well, like you're saying, like you're has a couple of suggestions around that. It doesn't directly involve law enforcement. I think TNDC as an organization needs to take some responsibility for enforcing some of our own no loitering policies. Um, and so there's some of the issues that we are bringing forward in the next in the next month or two. So. Thank you. I, uh, I, guess I completely understand I'm sorry, the, the, the hesitation that some people have to call 911 or the non-emergency line. Yeah. But we have two officers who spend all day, every work day, enforcing issues like that. And I have seen them when they check off at the end of their day putting stacks of citations in the lieutenant's box. Yeah, I know. So they are out there enforcing these violations, even if the public isn't calling them in. But they can't do it if it's not properly posted. Yeah. So at least we need to do that. Mm -hmm. so, I'm sorry. Okay. And I want to thank, I don't know if it was from Southern District or uh, from the Pinpoint uh, uh, Station, but uh, I happened to be getting on a train and, and it was some harassment and spitting on by a young man and uh, home code remarks and stuff. And uh, the Alpha Civic Center, it started down here mostly, but the Alpha Civic Center. And one thing I'm going to say, when the officers um, came down to the park station, they were really on their job. I, I described the person, and they actually found the person. No, they didn't try to handcuff me um, by uh, you know saying, well, maybe I started something. But they were really, really good at their job and making sure that that, um, that, that safety was, was uh, done. Also, um, can that building, um, because they're doing something, uh, well, I mean, whatever they're doing, they're, they're invading it, they need to put brighter lights, much brighter lights. You because the um, they're, they're, the they're making. Hmm? You mentioned the address earlier. What's the address again? For what? Building you're talking about? Oh, right across the street. 201. Uh, 201. I believe it's That's seven, the office. The building's address is 217. Okay. Well, um, the where, primary concern is really the lighting that's underneath the scaffolding. And, yeah. Uh, and where? That's already been addressed with the facilities manager. I don't know if he's going to do it, anything about it, but we did request that. So. But right there, too, because that uh, those trailers are blocking the street, so nobody can yeah. see. Uh, the, the officer is sitting there. Trail, the construction trailer? Yeah, they, yeah they're, yeah, they're blocking. So uh, I don't even like to walk through there at night, and, and I can walk around my headphones on with, without a problem, but I don't even feel safe walking through that. This is the building that had the fire? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so and if, we're, and if we're making sure that these uh, stores are having clear windows, you know, if they're doing construction like that, and it's uh, and things are blocking the street, and the police to see it should be uh, 
something done about it. Okay, I will pass that on to Captain. Uh, yeah. Anybody else? Yeah, I'll go back to um, Curtis brought up uh, a good thing beforehand, he told me before this meeting that uh, he's supposed to talk to, uh, I guess, the manager, right? And TVC about getting signs in the water. But, okay, you know, so I, okay. But, but what Curtis is talking about yeah. is getting the desk clerks trained and so we'll do the getting, well, are scared. because the TVC has always had a general policy. What goes on outside is not inside staff's business. And um, that's a policy they've had since they were founded in 1981. And getting that mentality change takes time. And um, with this new resident group, that's a tool we can have to put pressure on uh, men to Felicia's office and management to get that policy changed. So the Zesslers can take some not all, but some responsibility for the welfare of their tenants of their building outside their door. But that, that's a process, and I'm glad to see that it's starting because that's, that's the way to it. And I think what you need to do is attend uh, the meetings of that organization to bring your concerns up to them. I mean, who's all the I mean, what organization is it? It's the East, the East, Tenderloin and Resident Associates, uh, Association, yeah, Community Association. Uh, Representing 14 TNDC buildings in the Eastern. Maybe area. the two of you can get together so you, you can tell them when your next meeting is. They get to it. <coughs> I, had a, I had a question actually that um, maybe you know, I'm not sure that you know something about. You can also answer. Um, that it's news to me, and it was actually, it's in the, uh, I guess, current issue of the Central City Extra, and when I was picking up the, um, the drinks, um, the, the owner of Tip Pop had asked me um, about 80 Turk Street, which is like right next door to his location, and it used to be, I guess, it, so I was just reading a little bit uh, here in the, uh, the article that's in the Central City Extra, and I don't know, it's talking about the mayor's office, uh, community development, um, and it used to be a, um, I'm not sure what your question was. Last I last I heard, the organization is in the process of raising money to um, renovate the building. Okay. So that's last I heard. About. So is that before they park a lot? Um that's they're a South Market theater organization. Eighty Turk Street. Eighty Turk Street. That's the old Eighty Theater. Yeah, yeah, it used to be the former Dollhouse. Theater. It's, it's, it's the Dollhouse Theater. It was a while ago. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's it's a long 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 I mean, it's yeah. been a many generations of different things over the years. Yeah, um, I, I, I heard, heard. I know it really well. It's the Eighty Theater. I know there's a lot of discussion about uh, development there. Uh, yeah, um, I actually written um, the owners a letter inviting them to this meeting. Um, so I don't know if they're ever going to show up or not, but I know. It was their office in South Carolina. So it's now like a theater group or something? That yeah, something like that. Oh, okay. The other thing I wanted to ask is, have you heard anything about the manor house? The manor house, the 210 building. Because their owner doesn't seem to, a uh, guy who owns it doesn't communicate to anybody. I've, I've told, yeah, is there a particular problem you're referring to? Or is there a particular problem you're referring to? Well, um, he's not open. I think we were just looking for an update. He um, uh, came to one of our meetings a while back. Oh, the restaurant? Yeah, he came to one of our meetings a while back and gave a, uh, an update and everything in, in a little timeline. He has another establishment. And, no, um, yeah, we were just uh, I got called in a team to see and nobody at TGC didn't know anything either. Yeah. So, I mean, it's. Okay. Oh, one more question, sir. Sure. Do you know on June 27th they're doing the dedication for the uh, Vicky Marlene add-on uh, to 100 block of turf? It will not uh, affect the mailings of anybody and stuff like that. But they're doing that. Also, the Transmarch is going to end there. Uh, at that corner.
corner of Turk and Taylor. They're going through the process of uh, for the bus uh, uh, for blocking off some of the streets at a so I, I just wanted to give an update on that to everybody in the um, That uh, it's going to be effective like from 6 p.m. to like 9 p.m. or 10 p.m. Because they're, they are expecting like about 1,000 people. Yeah, yeah, June 27th, and that's a Friday. And they're uh, trans march. And they'll be marching from Dolores Park down here. Turk and Taylor, so they're going to close off some streets. Uh, okay. We come up Dolores Street to Market, down Market to Taylor, up Taylor okay. to Turk. Yeah. I'll leave a note for our permit uh, officer. Okay. And there, and um, I know that some of the public uh, officials are supposed to be here there because of this street naming for uh, transgender uh, for the big family. Do you have any update for us, Curtis? Besides what you talked about? No, you know, nothing, nothing pressing. Uh, you know, I, 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 there's been a lot of issues expressed to me about what's going on on this corner here since they started the enforcement on Turpin Taylor. Obviously, it's having an impact on this neighborhood up here. And I think, I think when the environmental study was done and the decision was made on how they were going to proceed with enforcement on Turk. Um, that was the conditions of the situation on this corner has changed considerably since that environmental study was done. But, um, specifically, the the trailer now has been added where the where it was an empty parking lot. Now we have a trailer with an after school children's program in it on this corner, um, and the scaffolding and, and stuff has gone up with the elevator and stuff here. That the that now that that element is hiding behind that stuff didn't exist when that original environmental study was done. Yeah. And those decisions were made, so the net impact on this corner has been particularly negative and, uh, and dangerous, I think, given the fact that we now have children in a mobile home right here on the corner, you know, in an after school program. And, you know, and I'm, I'm really concerned that if something like what happened at Turk and Taylor a couple months ago happens now, <clears throat> you know, we really have some innocence in harm's way where we didn't. Yeah. Um, I, th I think it's a dangerous think, combination that we really need to I think through. something that you may want to do is work with um, your management team um, and uh, DB Brothers to try to secure that. Yeah, we need some money now. Um, because uh, that's their responsibility. Yeah. Um, it's not senior city responsibility of the scaffold. I think, based upon the construction events that you see on Eddy Street, that they're going to close that sidewalk off. I was wondering if they were going to do that. I get the feeling sure how they're, they're putting up a construction fence yeah. along Eddy Street, and um, I just because they're going to they be had it closed to, off the last couple I of days. Routing traffic. Please expect they're going to close off the sidewalk. We, but we, the one that's really presenting the problem is well, on Taylor. Because if they close it off Eddy Street, they'll probably close off Taylor Street too. I don't know. You know, I saw Captain Shonis over there yesterday, just kind of talking to the developers. So I was. And they were in that area for a considerable amount of time. I was imagining discussing some of these safety issues. I would so I didn't want to jump the gun and, and yeah. place his fist until I saw what they did. Yeah. But I, I suspect maybe what you can do is um, see if you can find out and bring it back next month for our meeting. Yeah, well, you know, I think it would be pretty obvious by then, but yeah, I will. I'd be more than happy to. Thank you. I have a question that I would like, hopefully, the Alaska Builders and Six to help me on. And that's the community gardens because uh, I have the slightest idea of when you can get stuff. There's nothing posted about nothing. Well, it's volunteer hours, like you put on those uh, gates and stuff, I guess. But how do we? How are we able to get some of those fresh vegetables? See there, and and, and these people are using these open spaces for gardens, but. People like me that, that, that like fresh vegetables, and I, I don't ever seem to get any, and they look so pretty. Call the house. I know you're talking about the one over there by the. Yeah. They, they do a distribution um, once, I think twice a month. They do a distribution that oh. they hand out to anybody that's there. Well, they do it on the gates or something. Well, they sites or time. I know they distribute it at. Um, uh, 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 do you have plaza? 
twice a, twice a month.